Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and today I am filming the plan with me for the month of March, which is absolutely crazy. This means that I am planning for March. This is February's video. Sorry if that was like a confusing way to word it. Anyways, I have been doing these plan with me's at the end of every single month and I break it down by the tools that I'm using to plan the month ahead. And I personally am a big fan of planning content because it not only motivates me, but it inspires me to see what ways people are staying productive, what systems they're using. And I love feeling organized, feeling productive, especially if you're someone that wears a ton of different hats, you're doing a lot of different things. Comment down below if you are someone that has like multiple side hustles or maybe you have like multiple jobs. I don't know what it is that you're you're working on, but why do you like to stay organized and consistent? And like, what do you have going on in your life? Okay, I'm sitting down at my computer, you know the drill, and I am gonna go through how I plan my content every single month. I like to do this at the last week of every month. It makes me feel very productive. Before we do get into the planning content, I did want to thank Taylor Brands for sponsoring today's video. Chances are, if you are watching this, like I mentioned, you are probably deep into the entrepreneurial world. You're trying to start a business. Whether you wanna become a freelancer, a content creator, you wanna own your own company one day, you're making money through social media, whatever it is, no matter what business it is, Taylor Brands is going to be your go-to partner and here's why. Navigating starting a business and forming the LLC completely on your own can be really hard to navigate. Taylor Brands offers a comprehensive suite of solutions from streamlining LLC setup to furnishing personalized roadmaps for business success they have you covered. They have literally thought of everything. Taylor Brands simplifies the journey to entrepreneurship from handling the intricacies of licenses and permits to crafting attorney vetted business documents, designing a distinctive logo and building a professional website. They ensure that every aspect of your business has a solution and they even offer facilitating trademark registration, assistance setting up a dedicated business bank account, providing access to a finance manager, and they offer around the clock live support. With all of these essential tools at your disposal, Taylor Brands completely simplifies the path to entrepreneurship. I mean, licenses, permits, website building, trademark, business bank account, they have thought of everything. Reflecting on my own personal journey, I wish that I had Taylor Brands when I was starting Rella or my LLC for content creation, but I know that this is not the last business that I will be creating. So in the future, I will 100% be using Taylor Brands to help me set up my business. It's gonna make entrepreneurship smoother and more rewarding so thank you taylor brands for sponsoring today's video if you want to check them out definitely check out the link below so definitely check out taylor brands okay let's get started the first thing that i look at is my calendar so i plan out my entire month on google calendar this is my travel and my like day-to-day -day meetings google calendar is where i look at my month at an overview and my week at an overview but it's really just like places i need to be and times that i'm busy it's not like my little day-to-day -day tasks or anything like that. It's things that are scheduled and need like a specific time and date. This is what I do at first. So I'll look at my calendar. In, in the month of March, surprisingly, I am actually not traveling yet. I have a feeling that in the end of March, I'll probably either go home to North Carolina or visit my friend in Dallas, just because I haven't been to either of those two places in a long time, probably owe a visit home because I really miss my dogs, <laughs> but I don't know, we'll see. Open calendar for me is dangerous because in my mind, instead of saying, oh my God, thank God I can like save money and you know, stay home and enjoy Miami. I look at an open calendar and I'm like, where can I go? This month, I'm not really going anywhere. I am, I mean, the first weekend of March, I will be in Nashville. But besides that, I am here in Miami for the month of March. And a nice change from my two months of travel. <laughs> However, if I were to travel, I could look at that and kind of base my content off of it. Like, okay, that week I could do a vlog or this week I could, you know, make a tra travel content and I can just plan out my, my content based on what my monthly calendar looks like. If we go into my day-to-day -day view on Google Calendar, I always look at the weekly view that way I can just know who I'm speaking to, which meetings I have, what I need to get done on a weekly basis. If you are someone who likes to take a lot of meetings and you're scheduling them on your calendar, 
I highly recommend the app Calendly. That is how I book all of my meetings. Whenever someone's like, hey, what times do you have available? I just shoot them my Calendly because it does sync with my Google Calendar so it knows when I'm busy and when I can take meetings. Moving on to the content planning side of things, I use Rella, obviously, and I like to plan my YouTube content from a monthly basis and I like to plan my Instagram and TikTok content on a weekly basis. But because I have a bunch of content ideas, I will try to see if there's any days that make sense and like put them on the calendar uh, throughout the week. And then once that week comes, I can like reschedule them and move them. But I just don't want to forget that I want to get this content shot. So I'll look at my calendar at a glance. The way that I like to plan my YouTube content out though is by looking at my sponsorships and seeing if I have any sponsorships due this month. This month, I have three sponsorships on YouTube and I post four regular YouTube videos. Other four videos that I post on my YouTube channel are for my podcast and so that is totally different. It's not like the same sponsorships that I would have on my YouTube channel. I do try to have all of my YouTube videos sponsored though just because this is a job for me. This is what supports my channel. So if you guys want to give this a thumbs up, if you want to leave comments, that obviously helps with engagement and helps me find brands but I am very excited that I do have three sponsorships this month. And so I will actually go ahead and put those in the calendar. All of those are just little integrations. They don't have to affect the topic of the video. So I can still choose any video that I want, but I'm just gonna make sure that I add that to the calendars. I have a California vlog that I had already filmed and that's gonna be going up the first week of March. So that will be going up the first Thursday. Then I have another full week in my life, which I'm currently filming. And I have like when I'm filming and stuff, and I'll, I'll add that literally to the calendar as well underneath the tasks. For example, this full week of my life, I'll add a task and I'll say film vlog. And I will go ahead and I will add it to the calendar. I know this doesn't sound like a lot of work, like you just gotta remember to film, but if any of you guys are balancing content and anything else that you're doing, you know that you can forget to film very, very easily. I wish it was harder to do, but unfortunately it's quite simple. <laughs> also great for any like shots that you wanna get. So if there's any specific footage or any specific topics you wanna cover, sometimes I'll add those as a task and then check it off as I'm done filming. I'll also do some research on YouTube and see what other people are filming, what has done well on my channel in the past um, to see what I should film for the week because I do want my videos to be slightly different from you know having the same exact videos every week and I don't wanna rely fully on vlogs because I did that last year and I was really uninspired and hated my content so I want to get a little creative and the vlogs that I do film I want them to be very intentional and the third video of the month is going to be a FaceTime get ready with me so I'm just going to be getting ready on camera and chatting with you guys I feel like it's a good way to update you on my life while also showing value with like hey this is the makeup that I'm using this is entertaining whatever and you can pull this up when you're getting ready in the morning and we can like be getting ready together so I've been enjoying watching those and so I'm going to do that um, on the third week. The next one is my plan with me. Again, this is a standard one that is going to be up every single month. It's great because I know that at the end of the month, the last Thursday of every month, the plan with me should be going up. And so I have that on my content calendar. I also have a ton of content ideas over here that I just have yet to film that someone put together for me, which I'm so grateful for. So I've been adding those throughout the calendar for when I wanna film them. And I've been adding the to-do list of filming so that I know when I want to get it done. But whenever that week comes about, I'll probably rearrange things depending on what my week looks like. So it's a lot of monthly and weekly planning, but that way my day-to-day -day is kind of laid out for me. And then here you can see all of your tasks at a glance. So this kind of encompasses all of my sponsorships, all of the things that I want to get done, and this just prepares me for success for the week. I'll also go to my podcast workspace, and this is where I communicate with my podcast editor and my manager where I'll have my upcoming guests and then I know when I need to either book new guests or come up with some solo episodes. So until the 11th, I have guests, but after that, I need to come up with some content. So I'll probably film a solo episode at some point this month um, and come up with a topic, like one idea that I have. I literally have one idea. You guys, podcast topics come to me at random. Persistence is needed for success. So something about consistency, something about how to be successful. So I'll probably add that to the calendar and I'll add it for the 18th. And then I will just make it into the other platform 
and I will write when I need to film this by. If this is going to go live the 18th, I need to have this done by the 11th. So I'll add that to the calendar. But it's been good having on the calendar so my editor knows when things are uploaded by. I have a task template here for my podcast which has recording, uploaded, edited, uploaded reels. That way she knows when I'm done recording, when I'm done uploading the content, she can check off when it's edited and she can check off when she's uploaded the reels for this content. And I add that here so we can keep track of where we are with the podcast. So that's it for content planning. Then I move on to my budget. At the end of every single month, I wanna know what my budget looks like. I personally use the tool Rocket Money and I'm not gonna go over my entire budget. I'm not gonna go over what I spend because I don't think that's helpful. I think everyone's money situation is different. If you're making $50,000 a month, who cares what I spend? If you're making $3,000 a month, who cares what I spend? It has to do with you. So my rule of thumb is I want to save 50%, 40 to 50% of my monthly income. And so let's see if I was able to do that this month. Thankfully, this month was a high paying month for me because I was able to save 44% of my income. That is not including taxes. So I do want to make that clear. Like the taxes will come out of my savings, but I want to spend 50% let like i don't want to spend more than 50 percent of my monthly income every month so thank god february was a good month because this month i spent so much money i went to la san francisco newport beach all of those places were so expensive and my week and a half california trip ended up costing me like two thousand dollars like it was so expensive with the flights with the hotels for all those days and with the car that i had rented it was very, very, very pricey. And so my travel budget was really high. I did spend $2,000 or 1950, so pretty much $2,000 on my travel budget this month, which is 1500 over. I usually account for $500 in my travel budget, but I ended up spending a lot more. I will say though, whenever I travel for the most part, I never spend money on hotels. Like when I usually will travel to places where I can stay with a friend or I can stay with someone. But in this case, I had only stayed with a friend for like one night and the rest of it was hotels and traveling on my own. So it did end up being very, very pricey, but I don't regret it because it was a great trip and it was productive. Traveling is very expensive. My car insurance did end up raising, so I'm going to need to call them and renegotiate that because I ended up raising $100. Why do they do that? Why do they randomly raise it? I haven't gotten tickets. I haven't gotten in an accident. It just randomly goes up. So I will have to call them and talk to them about that because that is not okay unacceptable dining and drinks was a little over my budget i did end up spending 300 more dollars than what i had what i had accounted for so i did spend 900 dollars on my dining and drinks um however i will say that i was traveling which makes sense which is why i would have spent a little bit more money but the previous month i don't believe i spent all that money so we'll see and shopping i did go a little bit over i I'm not going to go shopping in the month of March. I promise you. My my shopping budget's going to be under in the month of March. Groceries was a lot under because, again, I was traveling, so I didn't really spend money on groceries. Uh, Uber and Lyft was a little over. Whenever I'm traveling, that happens. Personal care was actually under because I didn't really go and do that much. Coffee was only a dollar over, so I honestly am proud of myself for that. I didn't end up spending more money on coffee than I had thought, which is good, which I think means in the month, month of March, since I will be home, I can make a lot more coffee at home and my budget will be under. And everything else was pretty much under. Alcohol was $0 because I'm really not drinking, which is great. But in March, I'm telling you, I'm not sending any money. Mark my words next month's plan with me. I highly encourage you if you do not have a budget to make a budget because it will put things in perspective. Like anytime I swiped my credit card, anytime I entered it, I was just like, oh my gosh, my budget. And it just like makes you so much more well aware of where you are spending your money. And now it just reminds me because it's an app on my phone and I can like check it more often. So I'm not just doing my budget at the end of the month. I'm like constantly checking it to see where it's at throughout the month. As for my day-to-day -day productivity, I have been doing the two a day method. I feel like I've talked about this in a lot of vlogs. I've talked about this on my podcast, but essentially what it is, is I pick two big projects that I want to get done that day. Like two big things that are going to take up a lot of my time. And that is all I'm focused on for that day. For example, today it is this video. I need to film and edit and upload this video. That's one project. And the next project is I need to send out a list 
of emails to 60 investors. And so that is my next big project. And if I get those things done, then other things can fill in and I can do my tasks and little items. But instead of filling up your day, little to-do list items that aren't really moving the needle forward, but they make you feel productive because you can check things off. You just focus on two things that you need to do every single day and you get those done. And I have that on my notes. Still do like the ticks, quick tasks and projects, but instead of focusing on quick ticks and then going down the list, I actually start with projects and then go up the list. That has been helping me so much with moving the needle and like actually being productive. Whenever I don't do this method, I just, fill my day up with like random stuff that doesn't matter and then I don't get the stuff done but when I can get the projects done I just feel so much more accomplished and so much better that is why I highly recommend anyways this video is getting long my battery is overheating camera's getting dark thank you to taylor brands for sponsoring today's video definitely check them out down below and thank you guys for watching if you guys like these videos let me know if you want me to structure them out a different way let me know but these keep me accountable and i hope that they keep you accountable so i will see you guys next month with my other plan with me video and i hope you're excited for the videos to come bye guys